Beautiful people, my beautiful patriots, my brothers and sisters around the world. I hope everyone is blessed, well, healthy, and that nothing but the best is going on in all you beautiful people's life, man. Just here to spread the love, the positivity, the good energy, man, because you never know what somebody's going through. And by the title, you see we have an amazing video. So drop a like. Let's jump straight in and let's keep the comment section healthy. And amen. Remember to spread the love to one another. Because again, you never know what somebody is going through. Let's check it out, y'all. I'm very proud of African-American unemployment stands at the lowest rate ever <coughs> recorded. And we want to send a huge shout out to our loving, beautiful, kind, amazing patriot, Jennifer, once again, for sending over another amazing video for me to check out. And also showing love to the channel once again with a kind, kind donation. I love you, Jennifer. And you know I wasn't gonna forget to mention you. Mwah. Let's check it out, y'all. <laughs> and fun fact, we had a Thomas Sowell video, man, that did almost a million views on my other channel. And um, it got taken down, then it got put back up. It was, it was crazy, man. Hey, welcome back. It's your man Wise, and today <coughs> we're checking out a video from the great Thomas Sowell. He initially did not appreciate nor agree with Donald Trump. He didn't agree with Hillary Clinton. This is back in, you know, 2015 going into the 2016 election. He disagreed with both candidates. He didn't think that either candidate would be good, but he does seem to reverse positions on Donald Trump after he had a chance to check out and see the policies implemented in the administration during the first administration of President Donald Trump. We're going to check that video out. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Drop me a comment down below. I appreciate all the love and support. And without further ado, let's go. This is the mandatory subject, Donald Trump. During the presidential campaign, you wrote a column, this is when you still had your column, that appeared under, under the headline, Choose Trump, He'd Be Easier to Impeach. <laughs> and you wrote that voters faced a choice between, I'm quoting you, two out-of-control people, one of whom is going to be president. And you said since Hillary Clinton would be the first woman chief executive, she'd be very difficult to impeach, but Trump would be easier to kick out, so vote for Trump. Uh, now that he's been in office for a year, what do you make of him? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, uh, let me say that, that just recently Walter Williams sent me a, a, a video of Donald Trump in his mid-30s being interviewed. Uh, and so I've had to uh, back off on one of the things I've said, which is that uh, Trump is someone who has simply never grown up. He was very grown up in his mid-30s. <laughs> Speaking of retrogression. And, uh, <laughs> and it's scary because how many people are more mature in their mid-30s than they are at age 70? Hmm. All right. And, and given the trend line, uh, wh how optimistic should we be about his uh, becoming more grown up as time goes on? All right. All right. But in terms of, of the people he's uh, surrounded himself with, I think on the whole, they're a better bunch than either of the last two presidents had. So he has very good people. I think the, uh, Jim Mattis at the uh, uh, defense. Yeah, uh, but 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 other people are around him, and the question is: Is he going to listen to them? All right. Let me play you a brief excerpt of Donald Trump himself. This is from the State of the Union address this past January. This will be my first time to hear. Something I'm very proud of: African American unemployment stands at the lowest rate ever recorded. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my. He 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 produces a statistic. Maybe the statistic isn't quite right. There maybe no. It is. It is. It is. Yeah. And there you see a shot. You see Republicans standing and applauding. <coughs> and there you sh see a shot of Democrats who are sitting on their hands, including many members of the Black Caucus. Yes. In Congress, what do you make mm. of that? That, as with so many other groups around the world. The leaders of groups that are lagging are often themselves the, one of the biggest handicaps of those groups because they have to depict the problems uh, in ways that will allow them to play the role of rescuers. 
And so there'll be no talk about how you can do this or that for yourself. There'll be talk about what we can get the government to deliver for you. And usually that, that, that's a lot of words and, and things that have bad effects. And that's true not only with blacks in the United States, it's true of uh, people in uh, the lower income people in England and, and elsewhere. Wow. Mm. Thomas Sowell, man, phenomenal. Mm. Phenomenal. And he hit the nail on the head with that last statement there. The Democrat Party, they need an underclass that they can come with the carrot, with the trinkets, with the tokens and provide and say, we're going to be your savior. They need that. As black people has continued to progress in this country, it's getting harder and harder for the Democrats to tell black people, you're a victim, you're oppressed, mean white people are keeping you down. We're the ones that's going to save you. We're going to give you this, that, and a third, and we're going to pull you up out of that situation. It's getting tougher to spew that type of rhetoric because there are, are more black people in the middle class. There's less black people in uh, poverty. And what we do know is during Trump's administration, over a million black Americans pulled themselves up out of poverty during that time frame. And many millions more of Americans in general pulled themselves out out of poverty. Now, some of those people may be back in or at the poverty line today because things are just so expensive due to the policies of this current administration. Yep. But during Trump's administration, he hit some numbers that hadn't been seen nor hit in America when you talk about the black community. Lowest unemployment rates that we'd seen, highest number of black people that are homeowners. I believe that number hit 49.4%. When you start looking at wages, wages went up in the black community. Wages went up for everybody. Everybody. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, everybody, man. So <clears throat> when you have one party telling you are a victim, you are oppressed, you can't make it without the help of us. It's the other side. It's them that's keeping you down. And we have an administration that comes through and negates all of that. In about a span of three years, negates all of that. Because what we do know is, is that unemployment in the black community during the Obama administration on his way out the door was, you know, almost 20 percent or so, if I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on that. But I'm almost for certain. I believe I had read somewhere that it was maybe 23 percent or so. Obviously, we we're coming out of crazy economic downturn. I was one of those people that graduated college during that time frame, thinking that, man, I finally graduated college. I'm about to put myself in a situation where I'm going to make some money. And that was definitely not the case for a few years you know, coming out. And then the Trump administration hits and all of a sudden good things started happening for me. Lowest interest rates that we'd seen in this country. Hmm. People like myself and others were able to purchase homes at good interest rates that we're still benefiting from to this day. There was a lot of wealth created during the Trump administration in all of America, but especially in the black community. What we do know is the number one way that people build wealth in the United States of America is through their home. And more people was able to purchase homes during that time frame in our communities. It's very unfortunate to see that when he announced, hey, we had the lowest unemployment rate in the black community in the history of the United States. And all of the Democrats sit down to include the Congressional Black Caucus. That actually lets you know exactly what time it is with those people. What that means is they don't really care about black people. They care about the party more than they care about their own community. That also tells you that they care about the party and their ability to hold and sustain power over the well-being of the United States of America. That's what that tells you. Y'all need to see this video. Anybody that knows anyone that is planning on supporting the Biden-Harris administration, please share this video with them just so they can mm. see that clip. That clip right there lets you know that the Democrats, they don't care about Americans. They don't care about the progress of Americans. That's also the reason why they brought in all these illegal immigrants, because the Democrats need an underclass. They need some people that they can show, uh, give the tokens, put the carrot over their head. They need those types of people. It's important to them. So what they did is they just let another underclass of people in who now they can say it's not the white man. It's those 
quote unquote Americans, the people that have been here to include black people, to include other Hispanics, to include white people. It's those people that don't want y'all here. And we're the ones that allowed you to come here. And we're the ones that's going to make sure that you get here and stay here. And we're also the ones that's going to make sure that you get all the rights and privileges of those what we call real Americans or what those people call themselves as real Americans. That's the game plan for the Democrats. That's their next move. That's their play. And we're watching it happen. We're watching it unfold right before our eyes. Right before our eyes. Let me know what you guys think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Right before our eyes, y'all. Man, oh man, y'all comment down below. Drop a like, man. And I tell y'all, we're going to crack open a cold one in November. Trump 2024, baby. God bless all you beautiful people around the world. Thank y'all for stopping by and enjoying the show. And again, man, we're here to just spread the truth. Spread the love. I love you guys. And I will catch you beautiful people in the next one. Peace and love, y'all.